Hi everyone, it is December 26 and it is the first day of our 2023 Scrappy Sampler. If you haven't heard about this yet, I'll put a link to my blog in the description below and you can read all about it. It's a free quilt along that I'm hosting this December. It starts today. For the first week, that'll be December 26th through January 1st, we'll have one block a day. And then after that, we will slow down and we'll do three blocks a week. The schedule for the block release is on my blog. We'll be following that and I'll be posting all the patterns there for free. There is no place to sign up, just join in. You can head to my blog every week to download the free PDF and then go ahead and start making. I'm gonna do as many videos on the blocks as I can, hopefully one for each, and I'll be posting them here. So let's work on today's block. I have my fabric cut out and I'm all ready to start sewing. So here's my fabric. I'm going to be using this purple to make flying geese, and I'm going to be using this orange to be my center pinwheel type of block. So let's start with the center first. You're going to have four small squares in background, four larger squares in background, and four small squares in your color. The first step is to make this part using the little triangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay them next to each other like this and check the pattern and make sure we have them laying correctly. I do. So I'm going to fold the orange over on top of the white, make sure everything is lined up, and sew this together. When you're making blocks like this that use small pieces and are not trimmed, you want to make sure that your seam allowance is consistent quarter inch because if it's not, it will mess up the accuracy of your block. So here I have this and I finger pressed it open and I'm going to trim this little part off. Then what we're going to do is this will be the unit that we're going to make. So I'm going to flip this over and match on top of the background larger triangle, making sure this is laying nice and so. And here is this unit. I'm going to finger press it open and trim these edges off again. Okay, now at this point, this unit should measure two and a half inches and it does not require any trimming. So again, you wanna sew as accurately as possible. And we need four of these for our block. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest. Okay, I have all four of these made now. And you could choose to press at this step if you'd like. I choose not to. I prefer to finger press when I'm making the blocks. So now what we're going to do is look at our pattern and we're going to sew these into the middle section. So I'm just making sure I have these laying in the right orientation before I sew. And these, the seams of the, that are the large seams going across, not this short one. The large ones here on this first piece are going to nest together. And then I'm going to look at my bottom unit, which is going to be like this and like this. And I'm going to sew this. And again, this diagonal here is going to nest together. And then once I have that, I'm ready to just sew this middle together. So I open this up and finger press this open. And then I'm gonna press the other seam with my fingers the other way to nest those as well. And as you do this, you're nesting the seam here across, but you're also nesting these large diagonals too. They will nest uh, nicely with the, uh, the one below it. And here is the center of the block. Now we need to use uh, the rest of our pieces to finish it up. So the next thing we're going to work on is a flying geese. For this block, we're using stitch and flip flying geese. I'm going to show you one of them and then I'll make the other three. We need four total for this. So when you're making stitch and flip flying geese, essentially you're sewing a square onto a rectangle, 
and then trimming the excess and then repeating that on the other side. You can draw a line from this point to this point with a pencil so that you can see where you need to sew if you'd like. I use this guide that I draw on my machine instead. So I'm sewing straight from the top corner all the way down to this corner. And then I'm going to trim this off, leaving a about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If I leave a little bit more, that doesn't matter to me. And then we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. And trim this off. Now flying geese, I think, are definitely something that requires practice to get it to be just right. When you're making one of these, ideally, what you want is to have a quarter of an inch from this point to the bottom of the fabric, and that will go in your seam allowance. So when you sew this together, you want your seam allowance right up to this point, but not cutting it off. It is tricky and it does take practice, but the more you make it, the better you get. So we need four of these. I'm gonna make three more. Now we have all four flying geese and you could choose to press at this step. You just want to be careful not to distort your fabric. I do not press flying geese before I sew them into the block because I find the best results with that. So I am going to leave them and we are going to start assembling our block. We have everything ready and we're going to start sewing it together. The way I like to assemble my blocks is grid style. So what that means is instead of just sewing one of the rows like this and then making the other ones and then turning them and adding it to each other sewing i like to assemble them in a vertical style so what would what i would do is i would sew these two pieces together leave the threads attached and sew these two pieces and then the final two and then i would break the thread and then i would add the third piece to each portion keep the threads hooked and then turn it and sew the final two seams so let me show you what that actually looks like I sewed the square and the flying geese unit together there and here I have the next one and that's going to get sewn to the center. When you're sewing this center piece to the flying geese unit, what you want to try to do, the ideal, and it's, it's a little tricky so it's okay if it's not perfect, is this seam line should line up exactly with this point. So you can kind of feel with your hands or kind of try to look through and see, is this matching up? And then uh, sew across. Okay, and the last square and the last uh, flying geese unit for this portion. Then I break the threads and I leave those attached and I just open it up. Now this part needs another square, so I sew that on. And this middle part needs a flying geese unit, which again, we're going to try to match this line up with the point. And on this side, it's a little bit easier to see through. I can see the line. You probably can't see it on the camera, but looking at this fabric, I can see the line coming down and I can see through this white background that it, it's in line. And then the final piece is the last square that we will add. Thank you. 
Okay, and break the thread. Now I have everything how it should be, and it's hooked by thread so it can't get out of order. I still have my threads here and here. And now we just need to sew this seam and this seam. So one at a time, I will do that. Now, one thing to note when you're working with flying geese is depending on the way your seam allowance is pushed, like your point might not look as nice uh, for one of the directions. So if I fold my seam allowance up towards the flying geese here, you can see that that makes this point not look as, as crisp as it could. But if I take my seam allowance and I push it down towards the center, this point looks really crisp now. So if you just want to play around with that before you sew, you can decide. Um, and if you're pressing open, then, you know, that's not really applicable here. But I'm going to sew this together along the seam. And I'm just like finger pressing this as I go along because I did not, I chose not to press making sure everything is laying in the right direction, including my center pinwheel seam, which is what I just adjusted. And that side's on, and now we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I just wanna make sure these seams are going to be going in the correct position. Also, Here we are all finished with this block and now it just needs to be pressed. And here I'm at my pressing station with my block that's not yet been pressed and I have a hot iron ready. This is my favorite iron to use and I have a discount code for this one so I'll put that in the show notes. I like to work from the back so what I do is I flip it over and I make sure I'm going to start in the center here so I make sure that all of these seams are look like they're laying exactly how they should. I use my fingers to help position, and then I'm gonna start by pressing the center. And I do believe that pressing is a lot of personal preference, so if you don't do it the same way that I do, that's just fine, and if you have your own opinions on which directions that the seams need to go, that's okay too, and just go ahead and follow what you like to do. So I just press the center, until it's all set and that looks nice to me then what I do is I flip this over and again you want to take note about how, which way you want the seam on the flying geese unit press if I get it close it's a little bit of the thickness of the fabric that's making it not be perfect if I flip the seam allowance the other way it's a little bit more perfect so I think I'll probably go ahead and do it that way to flip it the way that will make the point look a little bit more perfect, I'm going to set this long seam on the back side of the block. And then I'm going to open this up with my fingers right here while it's still hot, just being careful not to burn myself, and lay it how I want it to lay. Once it's laying how I want it to lay, I just take my iron and come back across and set this again. Okay, and I'll repeat the steps on this other side. So let's take a look at this first. If I leave the seam allowance towards the flying geese unit, how does it look? It looks okay. Let's see if it looks better the other way. I think it does. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip it over, press this seam here, the long seam, and then I'm going to gently open the block with my fingers and then have my iron come back in and set, press the seam open again. 
And when I said open, I didn't mean the seams are open on the back. I just meant like have my iron come in and have this pressed. And here we have our block all pressed and ready. Hope you enjoyed making this first block with me. Tomorrow I'll be back with block two. So I hope you'll join me.